fixed integrals and the two sphere partition function. And she will start from the elevator pitch, which uh, I'm going to record. Okay. Uh, so I guess I, um, thanks. So thank you so much for the invitation. It's, it's really great to be here. Um, uh, I would love to be there in person, of course, but for now it's like 2D. And as basically my talk, so I will talk about two dimensional quantum gravity. And in particular, I'll talk about matrix integrals and two, the two sphere partition function. Uh, and this is work based, uh, this is based on work with a wonderful collaborator of me, of mine, uh, Dion in us. Perfect. So let me get started with the elevator pitch. So uh, the thing that we are going to talk about uh, throughout like the next hour is uh, the gravitational path integral in two dimensions. Uh, so we're studying basically the following object over here. Uh, well, like, uh, importantly, the cosmological constant lambda for us is bigger equal to zero, so it's positive. And so two-dimensional quantum gravity is, differs for, from its higher dimensional counterparts in the sense that the, the pure einstein hilbert action in two dimensions is, is topological. It's basically like the Euler characteristic of the underlying manifold. And chi h over here is for me the Euler characteristic. And exactly, so because lambda is positive, in particular, this term over here tells you that large area configurations are suppressed. Now, indeed, like in two dimensions, the problem is also that uh, this object is highly fluctuating. So because we are summing over all the geometries of a given genus, and then we are summing over all the, ge all, all the genera. So this is, in principle, highly fluctuating. However, there's, uh, there's um, one possibility that you can do. So if you are, for example, a genus zero, so if h is equal to zero if you're in a sphere, and then you additional this, additionally decide to fix the area of the underlying surface. So the area of the sphere is fixed to have area upsilon. And then additionally, you're imposing that this two-dimensional CFD over here has a central charge that tends to minus infinity. We can basically tame these geometric fluctuations. So, and then this is, has been shown by some logic of almost 40 years ago, actually. And basically what this means is that a genus zero, this fixed area partition function over here, we don't only have the topology of the round two sphere anymore, but we have the geometry of the round two sphere. So we found a cell. And, and just to remind you like uh, the round two sphere, that's Euclidean two dimensional decider space. So now what does this also have to do with matrix integrals? So in two dimensions, that, that's the great thing. Uh, the beautiful uh, insights like from, from many years ago, that a two-dimensional quantum gravity coupled to a CFT with a central charge, which is less than zero, and I'll explain this in more detail later, it is conjectured to be dual to a matrix integral. It is conjectured to be dual to a matrix integral that has been introduced by Kazakov and later by many other people. And this is called this multicritical matrix integral, which I've been writing down over here. So M here is a Hermitian matrix. And this alpha two to alpha M is the real value couplings. And in a limit, which I will explain throughout my talk, where we take alpha to a critical value and n to infinity, while taking n to infinity, this conjecture that the following uh, relation holds true. And, and if, if this relation holds true, then to some extent, like the matrix integral, much in the spirit of alpha gauge gravity duality, could provide a UV completion of, of the gravity partition function, of the two dimensional gravity partition function. And of course, and that's the reason why I'm citing Gibbons and talking over here much in the spirit also of Gibbons and Hawking, who, who claimed that we can get the decider entropy from a, a Euclidean path integral. The matrix model could, the matrix integral could, could even provide us more insights into the decider entropy. And we haven't, because at this stage, we have no idea what the decider entropy is. Like what does the decider entropy count? What's the microscopic origin of the decider entropy? So some of part of this could be basically, our goal would be that the matrix integral could provide us some insights over there. And that's, what I'm going to talk about in my talk. 